Hi everybody. I know I'm a little late starting this video. I already started. So January is the time of month when I start making a lot of birthday cards. Um, it's just to get my stash up because before you know it, we're tired of making cards because we made all of those Christmas cards. So, you know, there's really not a real holiday in, in January. So I like to catch up on my birthday and my thank you cards. So I'm using this... Um, bunch of balloons stamp set from kitchen sink stamps i love it because not only is it layered so we have that 3d look but you have this big cluster of balloons but you also have individual balloons you can do as well so i want to make this pretty simple um we have a little girl turning seven this month so i thought i would pre-make her card so i've already stamped out layer one i used the pink diamond all to new crisp dye ink for that and this i believe is a four layer five layer cluster so let's go through and do this together and hopefully yes i want to make sure i'm staying in focus and screen for you guys okay so that's the first layer very easy to do now since this is a new stamp set for me what I do is when I'm done using the stamp is I put them on their little layering guide here and then um, everything's transferred over to the back side of this so I know exactly where it belongs so now we're gonna go in with stamp number two which is this one here and these are brand new, so the way that I condition and prime them is um, line them up, and that's why I'm using my little Misty, and they are pretty easy to line up. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, and I'm just using a piece of Nina Solar White. And I'm gonna stamp first of all with Versamark ink. And again, it's just because they're brand new and we wanna make sure that they accept the ink. Um, the second color pink I'm gonna go in with is this Pinkalicious. And I've said it before, but I like the Alta New inks because you can get them in these little cubes in, um, the varying tones of the colors so it makes it really easy to layer okay so you can see it's lined up perfectly really pretty I'm just gonna clean that off I do like to um, clean my stamps when I'm done using them because it makes it easier for me, you know, when I'm done and I need to put everything away. Uh-oh. I don't think this was stamp number two. This was stamp number three. I grabbed the wrong one. Whoops, out of order. That's okay. This is stamp number two. All right, we're gonna stamp it again. We're gonna use the same color and then we'll go back and do number three in a darker color. Whoopsie. Okay, back in with the Pinkalicious. This is for layer number two, not layer number three. And it's okay if you stamp in the wrong order because, um, you know, it just matters what colors you're doing them in. So since layer three is going to be darker anyway, we'll go back in and do that as a darker color. It'll be fine. noticing when I was putting them away I'm like um these bubbles don't line up correctly okay so now we can go back in with layer three and all I'm really doing is just lining up the bottoms where the little um balloon ties are 
And if you line those up correctly, the rest of it will line itself up. Okay, so now we can go in with layer number three. And our next darkest color pink is called Rubellite. And since we've already conditioned the stamp, we don't need to condition it again. And hopefully we get a nice, oh, missed that ink in there. That's going to be nice and dark. That's okay. And the ink colors will dry back a little bit as they dry. And um, the blotchiness you see there will go away. I know it's, it's hard to see right now, but it will. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Stamp set number four is... This one up here. Yes, I'm sure this time. You only have to do that versa mark the first time you're using the stamps, just to condition them um, to accept the ink a little easier. Just because they have like this release material on them from when they get released out of their molds um, during manufacturing, so sometimes um, that really that resists the ink. So the versa mark makes it easier. Okay, this is layer number four. Wow, that's really cool. And it's really starting to look 3D now. Now, I don't have a fifth layer of pink in the Altenu, but I am going to grab another ink pad here. also has your balloon strings like I said and it has um, a couple of a single layer balloon you can do a couple of different times so you can do it you know on each side or in the background if you wanted to do different colors with that you could move all of these over okay and then we have layer number five grabbing Rich Razzleberry from Stampin' Up. It's like a purpley pink. Mine has fuzzies on it. I think that's like when the ink bubbles up. I'm going to wipe that off of there with a paper towel. I hope that doesn't affect the way my stamp stamps. Oh, that's super dark. Ooh, that's going to be a lot of dark. That might be too dark. Too dark. It did affect the stamp. Let me grab a paper towel and clean that up. Sometimes these things happen when you don't use them very often. It's what it is, is it's the bubbles that come up from the ink and then they end up, the ink ends up drying on top of the pad. So all you gotta do is wipe it off and then if you need to, you can re-ink it. Okay, let's try that again. Let me clean this off. It's kind of dark. I 
In fact, I'm going to stamp it off before I stamp it again. a little better. All right, and then we need to do our little balloon strings. I'm hoping, I, hoping that Stampin' Up! ink dries back. I should have just used the same number four ink and just did it twice so that it would have been darker, but that's okay. I'm sure a certain little six-year-old turning seven isn't going to mind. Okay, so now we have layer one and layer two of the balloon strings. Move my magnet up here. And you just line up the strings to their coordinating balloons. Hopefully I have that lined up correctly. I'm going to use deep iris for the first layer. That's cute. Now we'll see how well I can line up the second layer. Second layer, oh, ink all over my hands. My poor Misty's gonna need a bath. Okay, we're gonna use Midnight Violet. There we go. So you can see this can be a really um, easy to mass produce. If you were making party invitations, you would just stamp like how many you're doing. Let's say you're doing five cards, five of layer one, flip them through, five of layer two, flip them through, five of layer three, and so on um, until you had all the cards done. I'm going to make this, keep this really simple. I do want to add a sentiment to this. Okay, so we want the happy birthday sentiments. This set also looks really cute with the little bear. They always have the cutest um, sentiments, like their uh, font. Just looking at all of their different fonts. So we have this one, which says words for celebrating. Um, Never a loss for words. I really like this one though. I think it's more playful. This is out of the Daisy set right here. This one, we're gonna use that one. Okay. Perfectly at the bottom. 
purple ink, the last one we used, the Midnight Violet. Oh no, okay, how do we fix that? I'll show you. So what I was planning on doing was I have some pattern paper from Doodlebug Designs here. Actually, this one, which is where I got my pink from, but I'm gonna use this one. So we're gonna use this as our background. So we're gonna cut this down to five and a half by four and a quarter. So it's full card size. Okay, and then I wanted to cut this down a little bit as well. I think I have this at five by three and three quarters. Um, I'm actually going to cut it down a little bit more. Three and a half and four and three quarters. So just a quarter off of each one. We're gonna fix our little boo-boo here. So we're gonna put this black paper, I mean this polka dot paper in the background. Nice, fun, bright colors. Doodlebug Designs always has great paper. Okay, and then I do want to mat this in a little bit of black. I have a black, uh, what do you call that? Shiny cardstock here somewhere. You know what? I'll just use this scrap piece of black paper. No big deal. And we're going to cut this down to five by three and three quarters so that it mats off our little picture there. Never mind the hole cut out of the center, because you'll never see it. There we go, perfect. Okay, so now that's matted on there perfectly. So cute. I have a couple of pieces of this pattern paper that is scraps from cutting some other things down. So we're going to use this to our advantage. We're going to cover up our little boo-boo and then we're going to re-stamp it. So. I did oh, here's another piece might as well use them all actually I think three is gonna be enough I think if we do four that's gonna be too many so what I can do is restamp the sentiment on a plain piece of white paper we'll glue all of these fun colorful pieces in here like that oh that looks great and then we'll put the sentiment right on top so let's do that And then it will look like a design element. Like we meant to do that. Okay. 
Okay, that looks cute. And we can keep this pattern paper. This one we can put on the inside. And now we just need to stamp out our sentiment. So we have a piece of scratch paper here. Do I have a white one? Nope, all black, 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 black. Let's try to stamp that again, but stamp it straight this time. Okay, sentiment take two. Much better. And actually, you could even save the sentiment and put it on the inside. I should have, I should have, oh, let me do this right. I want to fishtail it, so I'm going to stamp it again. Oops. Now I'm making it harder than it needs to be. I know. Sorry. We can pop this up. Up, oh, need to make it a little narrower, a little thinner. Get a little bit of a haircut there. And this side, just a tiny bit. If you wanted to pop it up, you could do that as well. Well, covers up our little pattern paper there, but it still looks cute. Okay. And then, looks like this fun banner before I put that in there. I'm going to just put this little extra piece on the inside. Just for a little piece of decoration. Oh, and to cover my ink splotch. Okay, well, let's fix that too. We have an extra piece of cardstock here. We'll cover up that little inky boo boo. Look at that, never happened. Get this little piece of paper inside there. A little pattern paper. Looks cute, ties it all together. Now we can put this on here. I think I do want to pop this up though, so let's see here. You can use um, foam tape if you have, or foam tape or um, fun foam. I'm just going to use a couple of dimensionals just to make it pop up and look even cuter.
My tails are a little long here, but that's okay because this one's going to be hand delivered. No big deal there. And then just to give it a little bit more fun, a little sparkle pen there. And some of the highlights of these other ones. Not on every one. All right, so there we go. Really, really easy birthday card using two stamp sets from Kitchen Sink Stamps and just some pattern paper. Again, um, the balloons are called Bunch of Balloons, and you get your layering guide. You get the large bunch, you get some single balloons, and you get the strings. You also get another string there. And then the happy birthday sentiment came from the daisy set. It's the happy birthday right there. And then the pattern paper came from Doodlebug Designs. So I hope you guys like this. If you have any questions, post them down below. Once again, thanks for watching, and keep on stamping. Bye-bye.